Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Look, I'm just going to say this right up top. I'm a big fan of the flange. I've been using an old beat up Ibanez FL9 on my board for years and it's fantastic for a range of applications. Flanger is used in more places than you probably realise and it's kind of an essential studio effect and has been so since before guitar pedals are really a thing. You hear it everywhere all the time and that might surprise you if you think you hate flangers. Let me just tell you, you don't hate flangers, you just hate that one over the top unusable jet flange setting that was on your multi-effects unit you had when you were 14. And I don't blame you for that, but it's time to give flanger another chance. With the help of Walrus Audio's polychrome flanger, we're going to take a look at the history of the effect, how it works and how best you can implement it into your guitar playing. The term flanging comes from the old recording world of tracking records to tape. Studios would often have a recording on two matching tape machines and both would be mixed down to a third tape for the finished track. Both of the feeding machines would need to play back in sync for the final recording to sound correct. However, if for any reason, deliberate or otherwise, one of the supply reels were to momentarily slow down, this would produce a delay between the two feeds, resulting in a pitch and phase change in the final recording. You can check out The Big Hurt by Tony Fisher as one of the first examples of this flanging sound on record, produced by two tape machines that just refused to stay in sync. Les Paul? Yep, that Les Paul was messing around with deliberately altering the speeds of tapes in the 50s and is credited with originating the effect. The name, however, is a little more contentious. Some say that it was named after the act of pressing on the flange of the supply reel in order to slow the tape down, the deliberate method of achieving the effect, although Beatles producer George Martin says that it was John Lennon who came up with the term while recording vocals for a revolver. Either way, regardless of whatever the truth happens to be, deliberately altering the speed of the tapes was the only way to achieve the flanging sound in the 50s and 60s. It wasn't until the 70s that solid state technology had advanced to a significant degree that compact delay chips were readily available and the flanging effect could finally be replicated electronically in effects units. If you've seen my previous video on how chorus pedals work, then a lot of what I'm about to say about flangers will be very familiar, so I'll keep it short. Flangers take the input signal, duplicate it, send one copy to the output unchanged while sending the other through a delay circuit with a very short delay time. The delay circuit is controlled by an LFO or low frequency oscillator which ramps the delay time up and down causing pitch variations in the signal. This signal and the dry signal are then recombined at the output. But Colin, isn't that just a chorus pedal? You're right Barry, that is just a chorus pedal, but flangers do one important thing differently. They introduce feedback. By taking some of that delayed output and feeding it back into the non-delayed version of itself, flangers produce harmonic phasing effects on top of the pitch variations. So flangers are distinctly different from a chorus pedal because they use feedback to introduce phasing, but they're also distinctly different from traditional phaser pedals. Phasers have no delay element. They are simply a collection of filters which invert the phase of a narrow frequency band and then sweep those across the spectrum. These filters are hand selected by the designer to produce an irregular array of narrow frequency notches which don't interact with the signal, simply sweep over it. Flangers, on the other hand, generate their phasing effects by interacting with a delayed copy of themselves. This produces a harmonic phasing effect unique to the signal being flanged, a more rich and musical effect, particularly if the signal being flanged is already rich in harmonic content. Looking at you, distortion. That's why flangers sound quite different if placed before or after distortion. The additional harmonic content provided by the distortion gives the flanger more to play with. So while I prefer my phaser pedals in front of an amp, I prefer my flangers in the loop. One reason why players may fear the flanger is due to confusing control layouts with unusual control names and a lack of awareness of what parameters they're affecting within the pedal. I'm going to go through all of these controls and explain what they do and how they affect the circuit, and it's also fortuitous that the Walrus Polychrome has a very sensible naming structure for its controls and a layout that will be familiar with you if you've used their popular Julia Chorus. Rate and depth control parameters of the LFO. How fast the LFO cycles and how deep those cycles are respectively. 
This allows you to select how fast and how prominently the pitch variances alter. Just like in choruses, it's advisable to go either slow and deep or fast and shallow for the most pleasurable flanging experience. Sweep, sometimes confusingly called manual or more sensibly delay time, sets the midpoint of the LFO's sweep. This effectively changes the frequency range the flanger is operating in. At lower settings you get a deep, throaty flange, while at higher settings you get a bright sweep. The catch here is that the sweep and depth controls have an entwined relationship. The wider the LFO sweeps, the less influence setting its centre point is going to have. With depth at maximum, the sweep control is doing basically nothing, as it's already sweeping across its maximum possible range. However, with the depth set to minimum, a flanger effectively becomes a filter effect, with the sweep knob manually selecting the filter frequency. Hence why it's often called manual. The shape toggle allows you to select the LFO pattern. Sign for smooth transitions, triangle for a more vintage sudden directional change, and random if you're feeling brave and experimental. Feedback, sometimes called regen or resonance in other units, controls how much of the output signal is fed back into the input. Dialing it all the way down gives you basically a chorus effect with no feedback, but as you crank it up, the swooshing of the flanger becomes more prominent. The voice switch selects between two different styles of frequency interactions, subtly changing the character of the flanger. Finally, the DFV knob is nothing more than a blend, going all the way from dry to vibrato, and when in the middle you get the mix of the two, creating the flanger effect. It should be apparent from the control breakdown that the polychrome is capable of producing some extremely subtle flanging effects if required, which is my preferred way to use a flanger. When placed in the effects loop with a slow rate and low feedback setting, this will produce a lush movement to clean sounds which isn't overwhelming but is still richer and more textured than a pure chorus. This slower setting can be pushed into a little more prominence for distorted lead lines. You might not have noticed it but a lot of heavy leads feature either a flanger or a phaser. This movement gives them more detail and makes them stand out against everything else that's going on in the mix without it being totally obvious that there's an effect being applied. If you do want to be a bit more obvious with it, however, that's also possible. While the polychrome doesn't go to the most extreme jet flanger settings, by cranking up the sweep, feedback and depth, we can get a really in-your-face effect which can be used to add interest to intros and breaks in songs, produce some weird soundscapes, or just pretend for a few precious minutes that you're Eddie Van Halen. The momentary foot switch makes it easy to add these more extreme sounds to short, little impactful moments within a song. And it's not just guitars, flangers can and have been used for vocals, synths, and even drums, and much more. It gives interest to parts, and it's very much an effect worth experimenting with.
Hopefully that's got you up to speed with flangers, how they differ from chorus and phaser pedals, and what all of these controls do. Gotta say, I'm super impressed with the range of sounds available from the Polychrome. It's very, very easy to dial in the sounds I'm looking for, and it's got a rainbow iguana on the front. It's rad. If you want to get your hands on one of these, links are in the description. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of that YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. Stupid sexy flangers.